Okay, so the next thing in my scene was how was I modeling some of the other elements and also the dengue virus. So let's go to another camera over here. Let's go to the camera to underscore dengue. And let's turn off our lighting. And you can see that I'm using really, really simple objects. So here's my blood vessel over here. And these are just all these connective tissues. And this is that dendritic cell. So this one, uh, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted it to stand out. So this one was just built that way. But again, you could have in your own examples, if you're trying to do this similar example, you could have a lot of them outside the blood vessel because all the connective tissues, again, like I said earlier, are 360 degrees outside the blood vessel. So I just, for this example, I just used two of them. And the third one is the dendritic cell. And right over here is my, the virus, the dengue virus. So let's go, again, I have my shot cam over here. I don't want to touch that. I just want to go to my perspective view. And this is what my dengue virus looks like. You can see that it's got a lot of uh, deformation on it. So if I just deselect it, this is what it looks like. And that's the color. So just a little different uh, looking object right there. And this was very simply built right within Maya. So I did some sculpting in Maya for this object. So let's take a look at that. And let's also take a look at how I built this guy. And this guy was pretty much, if you just go down over here, it was started off just with the platonic solid right here with the icosahedron. That's all I did really. So, and this is simply a torus. So we don't need to really see how that is built. That's a simply a polygon torus. And this one's a simple right there, a polygon spiral. So if I just go here, you have your helix, which is that spiral right there and the torus right there. So let's take a look at how I built the Nengu wires. So let's make a new scene over here. And pretty much I started with the polygon sphere right over here. And let's scale it slightly. And let's go down over here. And what I did immediately was I went to mesh and I hit smooth. And I believe I have two levels of smoothing. So I hit smooth. So it's nice and smooth right now. Then right under polygon mesh again, right here, I went under Sculpt Geometry Tool. Sure, if you're using any other um, Autodesk products, like if you're using Mudbox or anything, you can definitely start sculpting over there and then get it inside Maya as well. In fact, Maya 2012 and Mudbox, they nicely talk to each other. So that would be a good approach too. So, but for this example, I just wanted to keep everything within Maya. So let's go over here. I'm taking the size of the brush up and down by holding down B and left mouse button. So that's taking the size of the brush up and down. And right here, what I'm going to do is these are my brush settings. And uh, here's the radius and the radius right here again. And then I have some push, pull, smooth, relax, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say pull and I'm going to turn on auto smooth that it's pulling. Max displacement, if I start now, you can see that it's displacing a whole lot. I can take down the max displacement in this case. And uh, under stroke, I like to have reflection. So everything I'm doing on one side is happening on the other side. So with that, I pretty much started just doing this. Now, although the smooth is a little too much over here in this case, so let's turn that off. And pretty much I started doing that. And let's do a little more max displacement. So I started right over there. A little more. And if you want, you can have different varies, different degrees of max displacement right there. So pretty much this is what I was doing on that object. And again, here's the smooth relax and we have the pinch. So you can even pinch in some areas. And here's the erase brush right here. But right now I'm just gonna pull right there. And if I hold down control, it'll push. So pretty much this is what I did. And I ended up with that object. And again, you can, like I said, you can increase your max displacement in some places if you want to. And you can also change your reflection 
if you want. And let's come down over here. You can also change the reference vector. Right now it's on normal. You can change it to anything you want. You can also change it to view and see what it does for you. And also, there you go. And after you're done with this, you can pretty much also start smoothing areas that you feel that, or relaxing areas that you feel are very uh, crude, like this one right here. So I can go back over here and start smoothing this out. So pretty much very carefully I did this uh, for that virus and I got that shape which I showed you earlier. So let's delete that for now. You guys can try that too. The star shape was very easy. I pretty much started with a really simple polygon platonic solid. And I started with icosahedron. I said create. And pretty much after that, I just went up here and I selected all the points. I selected all the vertices and I went to edit mesh and I simply did extrude and really that was it. <laughs> That's all I needed for that example. I wanted that that uh, that object, which is going to be the dendritic cell, to stand out and be a star-shaped kind of cell. And there you go. That was it. So just wanted to keep the objects really simple. But you could have a lot of uh, different objects if you want, or you could keep it simple objects, but uh, still make a point in your animation.